Hello, I'm Nadia and today I'm going to talk about a scandal concerning World War II that very few people in the West know about. And this involves the beginning of the Allied offensive to liberate Europe from Nazi occupation. This map on the left shows the situation in 1944 when the Nazis controlled almost all of Europe and it was clearly going to require a major effort to be able to liberate all these countries. So while Soviet forces fought German troops on the Eastern Front, which was the bloodiest area of conflict of the whole war, the Allies, America and Great Britain, made plans for uh, an offensive to invade Europe, which was predominantly uh, through the D-Day landings in northern France in 1944. But a year before that, starting in July 1943, the Americans and British were also landing troops down here in Sicily and southern Italy with the aim of advancing north up through Italy towards Germany. The American and British formations in Italy were known collectively as the 15th Army Group which was led by the British general, Harold Alexander. Within this was the British 8th Army, led by General Oliver Lees. But actually to call this a British army is rather misleading because the British made up only a minority of the troops. The 118,000 strong army was comprised of men from all over the British Commonwealth, India, South Africa, New Zealand, Australia and Canada. But the army that formed the largest contingent of over half of the men in the army were Polish and they were led by Władysław Anders. Now that may be surprising to you because we don't hear much about the part played by the Polish army in World War II. And there's a reason for that. It was covered up after the war when the West betrayed their most loyal ally and sold Poland out to the Soviet Union. I'll explain more about that in future videos. Today I want to focus on one of the Polish army's most important vi victories, the Battle of Monte Cassino. This Polish army was unlike any of the other Allied armies because these men had fought in the defence of Poland during Germany's invasion in September 1939, the event that led Britain to declare war on Germany. Now back then Hitler and Stalin were allies and when the Soviets joined the invasion of Poland they captured hundreds of thousands of Polish troops. And these men were sent to prisoner of war camps or to hard labour camps in Siberia. The 22,000 officers among them were executed on Stalin's orders, an egregious war crime known as the Katyn Massacre. Two years into the war, Hitler invaded the Soviet Union in Operation Barbarossa, and this was a turning point because it drove Stalin to seek a military alliance with Britain and America. And because of this, he agreed to release the Polish prisoners from Siberia to form an army against Hitler. This Polish army was evacuated out of the Soviet Union to Iran, and the Poles joined the British Eighth Army and served at Tobruk and El Alamein in the North Africa campaign. This is a picture of General Anders inspecting his troops in Italy. And one of these men was my uncle Yusuf, who fought at Monte Cassino. These troops are wearing British uniforms and on their shoulders you can see a flash with the word Poland. Now, because these men had survived the hell of the Soviet gulag, they had a hatred not only of the Nazis, 
but also of the Soviet Union. And this placed them in a precarious position in the war because they were fighting Hitler with the British, but the British also had an alliance with their other sworn enemy, Stalin. Approaching from southern Italy, the Allies needed to break through a formidable series of German defences known as the Gustav Line. They needed to break through this line in order to reach Rome along the only navigable highway known as Route 6. This highway was overlooked by a 1700 foot high mountain, Casino, and it was here that German troops lay in wait for them. The mountainous terrain of Monte Cassino was impassable by tanks and so the German positions could only be captured by foot soldiers. Guns, landmines and traps awaited anyone who attempted that assault. The first attack on Cassino was led by American and French troops and this battle began in January 1944 and it was a bloodbath. In just three days of fighting, 2,000 American troops were killed. The advance halted, but the French succeeded in holding the Castellone Heights up here. In the second assault, the Indian Gurkhas managed to take Hangman's Hill and a New Zealand division also took control of the town of Casino and Castle Hill. But casualties were very high by now. There were tens of thousands of Allied troops uh, wounded or killed. And so the whole Allied plan by now was in jeopardy. The third and final attack was spearheaded by the Poles. They knew that casualties were going to be high. One of the gunners described the incredible ferocity of the opening salvos. He said that the artillery barrage was so intense that the ears, noses and eyes of the artillery crews were bleeding. Another account said that on the day of the first Polish attack, the line of jeeps carrying the wounded was endless. It just kept going and going. After a week of intense fighting, the Poles finally captured Monte Cassino on the 18th of May. 900 Polish soldiers died at Monte Cassino and 3,000 were wounded. You can see the Polish flag flying here at the top of the hill above the ruins of a monastery. General Lees, the commander of the British 8th Army, told the press, I want to tell you that the capture of Monte Cassino was entirely an achievement of the Poles. I am glad you are here on this historic day for Poland. He wrote to Anders to send his personal congratulations to the whole Polish Army Corps for its magnificent achievement in the capture of Monastery Hill. He said, this notable feat will go down in history as a mighty achievement of Polish arms, and it will certainly figure in our own military history as one of the outstanding successes gained by the Eighth Army. Their achievement was so significant that Anders received the personal recognition of the British King, George VI. He was awarded the Order of the Bath. The name of this title dates back to medieval times when the ceremonial ritual to appoint a knight involved bathing. General Alexander decorated Anders on the King's behalf in Italy. And here you can see the two men saluting the Polish regimental colours on that occasion. Alexander told him, if I could choose the soldiers I would like to command, I would have chosen the Poles. I paid tribute to you. 
and the Polish army's achievements were also personally recognised by the British Prime Minister, Winston Churchill. Here you can see General Anders presenting Churchill with a Nazi pennant as a mem memento of his visit to Italy. According to Anders' memoir, Churchill reassured him about the future of Poland at this meeting. Churchill told him, you must trust us, we will keep our pledges. Great Britain entered into this war in defence of the principle of your independence, and I can assure you that we will never desert you. You should trust Great Britain, who will never abandon you, never. I and my friend President Roosevelt will never abandon Poland. Put your trust in us. Just six months after this, a secret meeting was held between Churchill, Roosevelt and Stalin at Yalta. Churchill and Roosevelt agreed that Stalin would annex East Poland, which he had illegally invaded in 1939. Not only this, but the remainder of Poland would be governed by a puppet administration installed by Stalin. I think you can imagine the absolute shock and devastation of the Polish army when they heard about this. Some of Anders' officers and men committed suicide. After everything they had gone through and endured in the Soviet Gulag, after shedding their blood to liberate their country, they had been sold out to their enemy by their own allies. In Britain, this act was also seen as a shameful betrayal of their ally, and many senior military figures spoke out against it. Its treatment of the Polish army created a political embarrassment for the British government. The betrayal at Yalta only, was only compounded by future events. In June 1946, an Allied victory parade was held in London and armed forces from all over the world were invited to participate. They came from America, Canada, France, Belgium, Holland, Luxembourg, Czechoslovakia, India, Australia and New Zealand. The one country that was missing? Poland. Despite its contributions to the Allied victory, the Polish army was not invited to join the victory parade. And this wasn't an isolated event, but a systematic policy. The Poles were excluded from commemorations for the next 60 years in Britain. And this is the reason why so few of us know about their contributions to World War II. I hope you learned something new from this video. Please give me a like below and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.